At the end of March 2021, the whole world's attention was riveted on the Suez Canal. The 400-meter container ship, Ever Given, ran aground while going through the canal and blocked the way for hundreds of merchant ships for almost a week. Every hour of downtime cost the global economy about $400 million. Yes, $400 million lost every hour. That is $111,000 per second. And yet, this event is far from the most dramatic in the history of the Suez Canal. Many countries sought to control the route connecting the Red and Mediterranean seas, and therefore the canal has repeatedly become an arena for military and political battles. In this episode of How It Was, we will tell you how and when the Suez Canal appeared, why it was buried for 1,300 years, why the British opposed the resumption of this sea route, and what made the Egyptians deliberately block the canal by flooding ships. But right now, please kindly subscribe to our channel, click the bell, and like this video. The history of the Suez Canal goes back several millennia. Historians believe that a semblance of this sea route might have existed even in the era of the Middle Kingdom of Egypt. The so-called Pharaonic Canal did not directly connect the Mediterranean with the Red Sea like the modern Suez Canal, but instead led from the Nile Delta via Wadi Tumilat to the Red Sea. Ancient texts report that around 1800 BCE, the pharaoh Senesret III began building the canal. He couldn't finish the construction. 600 years later, the pharaoh Nico II tried to rebuild the canal, but his efforts again were unsuccessful. Darius the Great, the king of the Achaemenid Empire and the conqueror of Egypt, made another attempt. The waterway at that time did not yet connect the seas, but as Herodotus wrote, it was wide enough that two triremes could pass each other with oars extended. After this, the canal existed for about a thousand years, alternately expanding and falling into decay, until finally, in 775, the ruler of the Apposid Caliphate Al-Mansur ordered the canal to be blocked for military reasons. This was to cut the supply of food and choke off a rebellion. The first modern effort to build a canal came in the late 1700s during Napoleon Bonaparte's Egypt expedition. Napoleon believed that building a French-controlled canal on the Isthmus of Suez would cause trade problems for the British. They would either have to pay dues to France or continue sending goods over land or around the southern part of Africa, increasing their costs. Studies for Napoleon's canal began in 1799, but a mistake in measurement showed the sea levels between the Mediterranean and the Red Sea as being too different for a canal to be feasible, and construction was immediately stopped. The next attempt to build a canal in the area occurred in the mid-1800s, when a French diplomat and engineer, Ferdinand de Lesseps, convinced the Egyptian viceroy, Said Pasha, to support the canal's construction. The Suez Canal construction officially began on April the 25th, 1859, near the Egyptian town of Port Said. The excavation took some 10 years, with forced labor, corvée, being employed to dig out the canal. Tens of thousands of peasants used picks and shovels to dig the canal by hand. Historians estimate that more than one and a half million people from various countries were engaged in the construction and that thousands of laborers died from grueling work, cholera and similar epidemics. However, the decision to build a canal connecting the Mediterranean and the Red Seas invited criticism from Britain which considered the project a political scheme set up by the French to weaken the country's dominance in seaborne trade. The British government publicly condemned the use of forced labor, and Egyptian ruler Ismail Pasha 
banned forced labour in 1863. Faced with a critical shortage of workers, de Lesseps sent an angry letter to the British authorities, where he accused them of hypocrisy. After all, not long ago, 80,000 Egyptian slaves died under the scorching sun while building the British railway line through Egypt. Egyptian peasants were replaced with workers from Greece, Italy and other countries. But most importantly, the French changed their strategy and began using modern equipment, including powerful steam engines to dig the canal. The work went much faster, yet the building took 10 years instead of the plan six. Due to British opposition and difficulties in the construction, this project was considered a failure by many. The greatest world powers of that time, Russia, Britain, the USA and Austria-Hungary, were in no hurry to buy up the shares of the Suez Canal Company, and therefore the biggest share went to France. The waters of the Mediterranean started flowing into the Red Sea through the canal on November the 17th, 1869, and a grand ball complete with fireworks was thrown in Port Said to mark the opening of the canal. At the time of completion, the total cost of the project was more than twice the original estimates, about $100 million. When it opened for navigation, the Suez Canal was barely 8 metres deep, 22 metres wide at the bottom, and 61 to 91 metres wide at the surface, while its length was about 164 kilometres. After completion of the project, the Suez Canal had a significant impact on world trade, although the traffic through the waterway was below expectations in the initial years. In the first year, less than 500 ships passed through the canal. The Suez Canal, coupled with the American Transcontinental Railroad, laid six months earlier, made it possible to shorten trade routes significantly. So Egypt had found a gold mine, but it did not have time to get rich on it. At those times, Egypt was in deep debt. In 1875, the Egyptian ruler, Ismail Pasha, was forced to sell to Great Britain its stock holdings, some 44%, in the Suez Canal Company for approximately four million pounds, which is equivalent to about 460 million modern American dollars. At the same time, the controlling stake, 52%, remained in the ownership of France. In 1876, the canal was rebuilt again, widened and deepened. Since then, it has become the world's busiest shipping route. It would seem that life was getting better but that's North Africa. In 1882, a civil war broke out in Egypt. Great Britain moved its troops to defend the canal, occupying the country. In 1888, the Convention of Constantinople declared the Suez Canal a neutral zone under the protection of the United Kingdom. It provided that the Suez Canal should always be open to ships of all countries, in war and peace alike. This was, however, a statement of principle rather than fact. Without British cooperation, it remained a dead letter. According to the Anglo-Egyptian Treaty of 1936, Egypt gained de facto independence and the British military forces were to be withdrawn from Egypt. However, 10,000 British soldiers still defended the Suez Canal and the British Air Force controlled the skies over the entire country. In 1954, the British, after a long dispute with Egypt, finally left its territory. Soon, relations between Egypt and the Western countries began to deteriorate due to the flirting of the Egyptian government with the communist bloc. In 1956, the United States withdrew its offer of financial aid to Egypt to help with the construction of the Aswan Dam on the Nile River. The crisis precipitated when the Egyptian president, Gamal Abdel Nasser, nationalized the Suez Canal with the hope of using the income generated from tolls levied on ships crossing the canal to finance the construction of the dam. 
The action of NASA violated agreements he had signed with the British and French governments, which hurt not only the economic interests of Britain and France, but also their prestige on the world stage. Israel, which had its own scores with Egypt, joined the alliance. In October 1956, the Israeli army struck Egypt. Great Britain and France warned combatants to stay away, but Egypt refused to stop fighting. Israeli, French and British troops invaded and occupied Egypt's Sinai and Suez Canal zone. In response, NASA completely blocked the waterway to all shipping by sinking 40 ships in the canal. These events are known as the Suez Crisis. It was possible to resolve it only with the help of the international community. Soon, the French, British and Israeli military returned to their homeland. Instead, the first United Nations peacekeeping force was deployed along the Suez Canal to secure and supervise the cessation of hostilities. In 1962, Egypt made its final payments for the canal to its original owner, the Suez Canal Company, and took full control of the sea route. However, the twists and turns did not end there. On June the 5th, 1967, the canal was again closed by Egypt due to the six-day war with Israel. The closure was sudden and unexpected. 15 cargo ships were trapped inside during the closure and remained there for years. After ending the hostilities, Israel declared that it would not give up Sinai and other captured territories until significant progress had been made in Arab-Israeli relations. For the next eight years, the Suez Canal, which separates the Sinai from the rest of Egypt, existed as the front line between the Egyptian and Israeli armies. Active hostilities were no longer ongoing, but artillery often thundered along the banks of the canal, and Israeli soldiers fought against Palestinian guerrillas. In 1973, during the Yom Kippur War, when a coalition of Arab countries attacked Israel, the Suez Canal was once again the arena of conflict. The Egyptian army invaded the Sinai Peninsula, previously occupied by the Israelis. After losing the war, Egypt and Syria restored diplomatic relations with the United States, which had been severed in 1967 and embarked on the path of reconciliation with Israel. US and British minesweepers eventually cleared the Suez from explosives and made it once again safe for the passage of the 15 cargo ships that had remained there since 1967. While their crews managed to maintain them, their decks had become so covered in sand over time that they gradually merged with the landscape and were nicknamed the Yellow Fleet. On June the 5th, 1975, the new Egyptian president Anwar Sadat reopened the canal as a sign of reconciliation with Israel. Since then, the African coast has repeatedly become the epicenter of armed conflicts. It was there that the most famous pirate attacks of our time took place already in the 21st century, as described in our episode, Terror Off the Coast of Somalia. Today, dozens of ships pass through the Suez Canal every day, transporting a total of over 300 million tons of cargo annually. At present, the canal is 193 kilometers long and 205 to 225 meters wide. Vessels with a displacement of up to 240,000 tons can pass here. For almost 50 years, the Suez Canal has operated almost without disruption, but traffic jams due to ship grounding have already happened in its history. Until recently, the worst episode was associated with the Russian oil tanker Tropic Brilliance. In the fall of 2004, it blocked the Suez Canal for three days. Can we hope that wars for power over the Suez Canal are over? The bitter irony is that this sea route was created for trade, that is to establish and strengthen economic ties between different parts of the world. However, due to the greed of politicians, it became a constant cause of wars and international strife. 
and there is no guarantee that such conflicts will not recur in future, given that the channel is located in the world's most unstable region. If you enjoyed the video, please do like it and ring the bell so you don't miss new episodes of How It Was.